minutes, I will show you how we build a, our latest B2B SaaS product that is a Google Sheet add-on that allows you to create and automate your marketing data on Google Sheets without doing anything. Literally, you just create a query and let it refresh every day, every month, every week. And I want to show you the exact process we followed to basically understand the use cases, prioritize the functionalities, and then building the wireframes in a Figma document that helps us build the product with the developer. And you will see the actual process and actual things we did, the decisions we made, so you can apply the learnings for your marketing launches or product creation. I will show you first in one minute what's the tool, what it does, so you understand how we build it with reverse engineering. So let's go. Actually, these new Google Sheet versions allow users that have zero knowledge to start without basically doing anything complex. So if you select any data source, for instance, in this case, I selected Facebook ads, then you can use a template that is a pre-built query. So basically you can start with a pre-built query and you only have to choose your account. For instance, here I selected this account and I'm going to click next and you will see that you will have everything pre-filled for you. If you create the report, you will run the query and also you will have in this case a schedule. So this Google Sheets page will be refreshed based on the automation. So for instance, in this case, it's every day, but it could be like monthly, weekly, or you can set this up like in the settings here. This is uh, still in, in the building process, but you can see that you can do basically other things without lifting a finger. So this will help you to move faster. And basically, this is one of the most exciting features we have in the new version, besides the very good design that will help you manipulate the tool without any previous knowledge. Now you know what the tool does and who is for. Now I'm going to tell you how this began and how we rebuild the, the second version, like the step-by-step, -step, real examples, the Figma, and the Notion doc. So let's go. If you use the first version, then you know we launched this like a year ago. Basically, it was an MVP, and we had a lot of internal changes about the connector. So basically, we learned a lot about customers, use cases, activation, usage, because we get a lot of people to download it, more than 13,000 just with SEO, with our LinkedIn profiles, and with our email list. But then the usage, activation metrics, and monetization metrics weren't there. So we decided to rebuild everything from scratch. And back to the drawing world. Basically, I checked all the feedback we received, and also I started documenting the alternatives and use cases. Basically, my methodology was, Okay, I have these use cases. You can see the screenshots here. And then I reverse engineer, okay, what features do we need to have in order to solve these use cases? So I basically documented all of these with pictures. So you can see here like competitors or actual end states. So that were related to a specific feature. Then we prioritize those features. With whom? With the product manager, with the developers, and also to define the scope based on what we learned in the first launch of the product, the first version. So we ended up with these uh, features that the product needed to have in this new version. So basically, we like segmented this in terms of priorities, medium, high, or low, then the type of feature. This is an experience improvement, this is a need, or is differentiation. Later, we want to focus more on differentiation features, but we have to balance the needs, the experience improvement, and the differentiation features in the first launch. So we managed to have the essentials, some differentiators, and then we can jump into actually adding more differentiation features based on usage, based on insights, and all of that. So how does this look like? Basically, you can see here like a description, like an image of how this looked like. For instance, it was like a feature that will allow users to transform columns into rows. So basically, we haven't seen a competitor that does it like this. Yeah. So basically, we transformed that description into a Figma visual document that explained every feature, and it had the wireframes uh, showing how success looked like for the customer. So here you can see we have this icon to show the orientation of the table. If you want the headers to go in, the, in columns, then you have, by default, this. But if you want them as rows, then you can change the direction of your or the orientation of your table. And that's a new feature that actually no competitor has, or at least at the moment. And it was based on 
the use cases we saw from customers. Here's the prioritization, the use cases. The next step is to build a visual representation. The first thing I built, actually I built it myself, okay? Not the designer, myself, because we don't have an in-house designer. So the person that was closer to the customer and that understood this was basically me. So I like in this version myself, I love design. I'm not a designer, but I really like it. And I started to build things and to add comments and to have drafts. And then I shared this, like the a user flow to our team. We have a, a small squad of, I don't know, three, four people. And basically they share their recommendations and feedback with me. Then we rebuild everything with the designer, of course, thanks Uber. And basically we started to make the user flow and all the screens and everything. But then we had a problem. Basically we had, we, we started iterating over like the, the design, the wireframes, and then we had everything. We lost control basically of the building process because we had a lot of screens. So we, we have more, more than I, I think 100 screens here. So if you don't have a system, it becomes very difficult to manage. So what, what we did was to be, to build everything with components and then those components became screens. So now we have this control center, basically what you see here. And then we have the specific screens with the specifications for the developer and also the user state. So we have like first time, like the template editing, we have all the user states and the screens and also the specific things that goes into every list and every screen. So the developer can build it very easily. Also, we have weekly touch points with the developer team. I really like uh, a phrase I heard that it was like the best handoff between product and development is no handoff at all. It means that you have touch points where you receive feedback and you start iterating things um, when they are in the building process. So basically we had a weekly touch point where we saw the progress and we also answered questions and implemented considerations that we didn't have at the beginning. So basically this was a, a continuous process and then like basically you are ready to launch right now, but we had different revisions uh, where, where we fixed things and then they were implemented in the Figma. Basically our source of truth is this Figma file. If something is not in the Figma, then we don't implement it. So that's how it works for us. And basically now we are going to relaunch this and now we are going to focus on distribution. Like we are going to become distribution machines with content, with use cases, with everything. So that's the focus. So we can get users, we can get feedback, we can see how's the user behavior within the product, using the product, and we're going to iterate based on that. But we have a lot of learnings of the first version. So basically the TLDR here is if you have a system, everything is better. If you build and have use cases, uh, feedback from customers, then building is easier. So a, spe a special shout out to the team that built this. So get to know our internal team who built this. You always use products, but you don't know who built them. So let's change that in this presentation. So the orchestrator is Mateo. That is the person who helped us to prioritize and to have the team focus. And then we have the builder that is Sebastian, our developer for this product. Thank you, Sebastian, because it was pixel perfect. I love detail and design and you nailed that. So congrats. We have the bug hunter that is Nairobi Romero. She focuses on basically hunt every bug, report that bug and prioritize what we have to fix before it's launched. Then we have the layout maestro that is our UI designer that is Uber Martinez. Thank you Uber because I know that I'm very intense when building the product. And we have the template builder that is Juan Bello and he helped us to build the use cases for the templates that help us build queries so the users don't have to build them themselves. So this is the team behind the idea. And of course me, Daniela Gomez, I'm the head of growth and I was the product manager of this project that I'm presenting to you. So if you have comments, questions, and if you like this type of presentation, just tell me and I would love to hear from you. Bye.